This is a horrific prophetic encounter God gave me. He literally spoke to me and showed me young people who are in love with Jesus and the Word of God and they're wanting to be able to do things for God. But at the same time, at the very same time, they're in darkness and they're worshiping darkness. They're bowing down to it. Jesus said we can't serve two gods. We're called to be children of the light. Find out the details about this prophetic encounter with God. Check it out. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Um, I want to share with you what the, the Lord just spoke to me about even uh, this morning about children of the day. When you think about um, children of the day, I mean, it has a lot of meaning to it, but remember that as he tells us in, I believe in Psalms or Isaiah 60, he says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And, it is, and, and the glory of the Lord is over you. And in the context, we think about that, that that's Jesus Christ, the light of the world. And He has come to us, but now He's going to be with the Father. But He gave us the light, which is the life of men. And now He's sending, sending us out to be the light of the world. That's why VFN Radio, you hear us go, hey, we are keeping the conversation light. And people go, well, I thought that was light. That's pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. Well, no, it's just the truth of God's Word. I mean, we're just talking, you know, we're looking at it in view of His mercy, and because of his grace, you know, we're, we're looking at the context of, of things, understanding that we stand ourselves because of his grace and his mercy and because of his forgiveness. But we fail because of our own frailties and our own flaws and our own Romans chapter 7 struggles that Paul talks about in the context of that. We, we refuse to be silent. Mm -hmm. We are not going to be silent. Our God is big enough, big enough do whatever he wants to do, whenever he wants to do it. And so we want to bring that light conversation to you in the context That's of that. Right. Yeah. Well, the, uh, and so this is what the, this is what the Lord showed me. The Lord, the Lord showed me, I was talking to, uh, I had a vision. It was a vision and, and, uh, <laughs> I had a vision and I was talking to, um, <laughs> This is amazing. He doesn't even know. Totally. He's like, <laughs> he even, are you with us today? He's like, okay. All right. We're back. We're back. We're back. <laughs> Thank you. Come back. Come back. Uh, okay. Come the, back. This is VFN Radio. Yeah. And so, in, okay. John was in this vision. <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> he was sleeping. His, his frontal lobe was sleeping. No, the, um, and so where am I? Okay. He had a vision. He had a vision. He knows how to spell. Jesus came back. Yeah. Took us out of here. Yeah. Tilt, right, tilt, right. Tilt. He said, everybody but Pat. No, everybody but John. Okay. The, um, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was an axe. Okay. The, um, okay. Now I'm going to tell you what the Lord said to me and showed me in a vision. He showed me, I was in this place with a lot of young folks and uh, probably 20s and, and uh, teens. And... Um, and I was witnessing, you know, sharing the love of God with them, loving God, loving God, you know, this is the same. And um, of course, there was a, there was some there that just totally repelled the gospel. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Totally repelled it. And then, but there was uh, there's, there's these two others that were just so drawn. They were like, mm -hmm. you know, just, it just looked like a normal approach where somebody's approaching the gospel, and they want Jesus. Like they're like, yes, this is great, and oh my goodness, and they're like, yes, 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 yes. And uh, so, you know, I'm sharing with them about Jesus Christ, you know, and no blurriness here. And uh, they're like, and it's just look like, hey, these guys totally are just, they just made a decision to follow mm -hmm. Jesus, follow the light, to be children of the day, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, and so then after they finish, we finish that whole encounter, they get so excited. They take me back to this other room. They want to show, I got to show you this, I got to show you this, I got to show you this, I got to show you this. And they went back to this other, this room, you know how things are. And in this room, there was a shrine in this room, a shrine to Lucifer. Oh, wow. And uh, they went in there, they went in there, just as excited as they were about Jesus, they were excited about, they were excited about um, Lucifer and worshiping Lucifer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, help me, <laughs> and about Lucifer and in the context of that, we're just hearing what the Lord is saying. God is speaking continually and he wants to speak to you and just begin to abide with him and allow, just begin to build your relationship. You think about Eli taught Samuel how to hear from God, but once mm -hmm. he heard from the Lord, he was able to not one word, he missed not one word. And uh, I can't say that, but in regards to, he wants to speak to all of his people. He's pouring out his spirit on all flesh, everybody. 
And by the way, just because you have a dream does not mean you know the one who gave it to you. Mm. Ask Nebuchadnezzar. Ask, right. you know, mm. like, I have. I know Jesus. Well, he gave me a dream. What did he say? He said, "Repent." <laughs> <laughs> That's not doesn't mean you know him. That just means he warned you. It means Job thirty three. Anyway, so uh, here we are. God gave me a vision. The vision he showed me were I'm talking to these these young folks and and young meaning twenties and 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 uh, maybe teens and um, I'm sharing with them the gospel. There were some that just totally repelled the gospel and just you know, left. And then there was some that seemed so interested in it. And so I shared with them about the love of Christ and, and they just, they just like, yes, mm -hmm. yes. And, uh, and it's like they received the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I would have thought that they had made a decision for Christ. And of course, Jesus says, you always know them by their fruit. So it's not about somebody saying yes. It's about somebody living a yes. Sure. And, uh, um, so you, you know, by time and in the context of that, um, in the context of it, the um, I'm sorry, I just saw something else pop up. Man, computers are amazing. They're amazing. Oh yeah. Uh, the rapture just happened. No mess with it. Shiny object. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the uh, uh, and so then these guys get so excited. The ones that I thought just met met the Lord, you know, they they get so excited. They're like, I gotta show you this. I gotta show you this. And so they carry me to this other room. And this other room is like dark. It's got uh, like black. Um, it's just dark. It's got like black cloth and everything down and an altar to to uh, to um, Lucifer, mm -hmm. to Satan, and um, like a pen pentagram, you know, type mm -hmm. thing, and um, Satan symbol or something like that. Yeah, satanic symbol. And I'm not into all that aspect mm -hmm. of it, but the um, just telling you what God showed me. And so then they, these two laid down at the altar, but they didn't just lay down. They pressed every part of their flesh as slow as they could go to the floor, happily, just so happy. Because they were like, they were just as, just as thrilled as they were to be perceived to be children of the day and to receive Jesus. That's how thrilled they were to receive the message of Lucifer and had, had no, they, they thought they could do both. Wow. And so they're, they're, they're laid down across the altar like you're just going to, an altar meaning, you know, this, this whatever it is set up. And they laid face down, pressing their shoulders down. Imagine it being your the whole body's flat down on the ground and they're pressing their shoulders down, pressing their face. And there's like no part of their body that they couldn't get to the floor that they pressed it to the, to the, to the, to the mm -hmm. altar. Mm -hmm. And they were excited about this. <laughs> I'm thinking, what the heck's going on right here? And then when they did that, it was almost that pentagram type thing peered over them, like a black blanket of darkness mm -hmm. over them. And it had the pentagram over them. And it's like, these are like bipolar opposites right here. And all of a sudden I started, you know, uh, confronting that it's like this is not right and all of a sudden this small um it wasn't a child but child size you know manifestation of some dumb demon comes barreling out of there running after run at me and i'm thinking because i confronted it and said this is not right you can't beat this is not right. you know what, what just happened this? here and it came at me you know i was just like bound it in jesus i find you satan darkness in jesus name you know and it started and it, but it was furious that I was going to explain to these two young people who were so excited to hear about Jesus that you can't be children of the night and children of the day. You're going to have to make up your mind. Are mm -hmm. you going to be night or are you going to be day? Yeah. And, but they but they didn't know that. And the, the deception is what you think you're doing is right when you're wrong. And so all I was doing was because I had this heart for these these guys that was like you're going after God. This is great. But they were so they were deceived by the Satan to thinking that you can actually be a, you can worship Satan and you can worship Jesus. Mm -hmm. And, you, and worship means follow him. Mm -hmm. And um, it doesn't mean sing a song, believe me, believe me. And, um, but in the context of this, that, um, so I'm looking at these, these two, two young men that were so excited and they seem so innocent on the other side and they still are innocently laying down and, and put it, pressing their bodies to the altar for this, Satan. Other God, yeah, for Satan, and uh, and so all I had to do was just start saying, "This is this is this is not right. This can't be." And as soon as I said that, that thing just barreled out of that darkness that was they were laying down to, and just come right at me. Mm. You know, and I just bound and binding it, binding darkness and mm -hmm. Satan and all that kind of stuff. By the way, you before <laughs> freaking you out. Hey, just to let you know that uh, God's <laughs> given us authority to bind, you know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness. Jesus said, this is how it works. You know, when a demon comes out of a man, he goes out, looks for a place to find a place. He can't find a place. It comes back and gets seven worse. If you got empty houses, open doors. Okay. Got that done. 
that, um, you know, remember Jesus walked in a room and some demons going like, um, aren't you a little bit earlier than what you're supposed to be? What are you doing this here? This is before our time. Yeah. And if, when you understand that it's darkness that you're, that you're wrestling against and not people, then you can love people that are, you can have compassion for those young men who thought they could do, be children of the day and children of the night instead of being offended yeah. because they got a tattoo of a pentagram on their arm at the same time while they're professing to be children of the light. You can understand that was the devil deceiving them. Yeah. But all you got to do is it's so powerful. The gospel is so powerful. Just begin to share with them the love of Christ. And the reality is that, you know, you can only have one God above him. There isn't another. Mm -hmm. And the access to him is through his son, Jesus Christ. That's why so many people talk negative about him from the other religion, mm -hmm. because they, he is the only, only way to God. Mm -hmm. And I think, man, is that not today's church? I mean, today, not today's, well, you're talking about one out of three, you know. Professed self, evangelicals, right. Say that there's more than one way. Well, these guys thought that there was, an, there, you can actually do, serve Lucifer and you could serve um, Jesus at the same time. But once they bow, made a decision to bow down to the altar of Lucifer, they're not serving Jesus anymore. That's right. But understand, they were so innocent in how they did that. They were so, they were so deceived in thinking things is right. And that's how it always works. It's like, you know, telling the Jews, just go take a shower, everything's great. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's deception. That's not going to be a shower, that's gas. But this is what First Thessalonians 5 says. 5.5, 5, it says, you are children, you are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So you have to understand, there is a difference in our life when we walk with God. No, we're not perfect. Yes, we're all under a dark cloud in the context of blanket. It blankets the earth since the fall of man. And thick darkness does cover mankind. But the light of God, when you make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, is inside of you. That's a life in the light of God. And so the, the enemy hates that. So the enemy's going to want to convince you or deceive you that you can be a child of the night and mm -hmm. a child of the day. But once you choose to be a child of the night, you've chose made another choice that says, I'm not going to be a child of the light. I'm not going to be a child of the day. And the gospel has been preached, a message has been preached that you can be a child of both. And the Word of God lets us know that, um, that He's a jealous God. And, and, mm -hmm. you, know, you cannot have any other God. In Acts chapter 26, verse 17 through 19, Paul says this as he's speaking to King Agrippa because he actually had appeared before King Agrippa. And he's talking about his call into ministry. And this is what God had called him to do. When, and he's, he's giving his whole explanation there. And he's saying... This is, this is God speaking to, um, to Paul in regards to, um, yeah, and this is, this is Paul explaining what God told him he was supposed to do for him. You know, so there's things I need to show you that you must suffer for me and that type of thing. But yet Paul's given this testimony <laughs> later on in his life to King Agrippa. He's having to answer for him. And he says this, he says, I will rescue you <laughs> from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light. Mm. See, in this vision that God showed me, there was people being turned from light to darkness because you can't have them both. But he says, I'm sending you to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that you may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified. By faith in me. You see, in this vision, God showed me people turning from the light, receiving the light, happily, merrily, just happy about it, but then turning to darkness. But this is what God has called you to do and called us to do, is to turn you from the altar of darkness to the light and never look back. He has not called you to be a children of, a child of the night. He's calling you out of the night. He's calling you out of the darkness. He's calling you to be a child of the day. But also I got a chance to share about children of the day, what a vision the Lord gave me even this morning about um, uh, exactly what it appears what's going on, give an explanation of it, and that God's called us to be children of the day, the light. And uh, that's why we hear on BFN Radio that, you know, we're keeping the conversation light, that's mm -hmm. L-I-G-H-T, because Jesus commands us to be the light of the world. Yeah. He doesn't say, hey, if you don't mind every now and then turning on a little light, Right. That's like, you know, <laughs> that song years ago was like, let your little light shine. Let yeah. your little light shine. Yeah. When I, first, when I first gave my heart to the Lord, you know, I'm going straight from, you know, Marvin Gaye and, you know. Metallica. 
No. <laughs> no. No Metallica. No. Not, I can't see him with the Metallica. That was not. No. That no. Okay. no. That, 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 was, that, that was not me. I was more like Luther was, Vandross, you know, that type of person. And um, I thought that was kind of stuff I listened to. We're so excited about our new book, I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You gotta have a strategy and you gotta fight. It's not about a physical fight, but you gotta fight. And guess what? If you fight, you win. You'll be successful. This book is about transforming your thoughts, about what your beliefs, the decisions that you're making, about speaking, what you say is so powerful, and what you do, what you're saying, your actions you take. And quitting, don't quit. Listen, success and failure quite often is just five more minutes. And finally, think about this. So many people talk about you should do this and you should do this and you should do this and look what they're doing. They're not doing nothing. You can't let people tell you you should do this. You should. As a matter of fact, they can't be putting their should on you. This is so important. Listen, we want to bless you with your free copy of I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You can get it at vfnkb.com. That's vfnkb.com. Get your free copy today. And uh, to the first one, I'll go to the college campus because God called me to go. Actually, what he, I, I, yes. I, I was yes. I was in law enforcement, but I thought you know God put a call on my life, and it's the beginning parts of a call. You got process after a call, and so I go and apply for a Bible college, <laughs> you know, the Bible college of the day, mm. and that, that the world was talking about, and and God was using and moving. Sure. And I thought, well, you know, that's what I'll do. So I went and talked to the sheriff. And I said, um, I'm turning in my resignation. <laughs> you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. You know, he was very, very kind. Uh, it was Sheriff Jim, Jim Lohman at the time and um, in Escambia County, Florida, actually. And told uh, him and um, my spiritual father, uh, Brother John Kilpatrick, had uh, even filled out an app. Um, you had to do like a... Uh, um, letter of recommendation? Yeah, letter of recommendation, all that. I'm not going to say the name of the college. <laughs> So anyway, I am, you know, brand new. You know, we my desire through VFN TV and BFN Radio is to help you relax and not to put anybody on any pedestals, but realize that Jesus loves you and wants to connect and relate to you. He's awesome and he is holy. He's kind and he is stern. Mm. But just relax and, and get into the family and function. Of course, you know, being new, you just think that everybody is just perfect and you don't know anything. And, right. You need to go and, and minister. I need to go to school. And so I, I put in an application to go to this particular college in a different state. And uh, so I get a phone call. I get a phone call from the college. And I'm thinking, like, here it is. Here it is, you know. And uh, did they, did they, did they uh, accept you? Accept me? Uh-huh. You know, I'm like, this is it. Because I was already saved. Right. You know, but then, so I want to learn more about Jesus because I got a call on my life. Mm-hmm. And uh, they turned me down. They said you haven't been saved long enough to learn to learn about God. Oh, wow! <laughs> Thank God they turned me down. I would mm-hmm. have a, a, like an empty spot on my wall because I couldn't hang that thing on my wall. That's no doubt. Day. Is, is the school around today? Uh, uh, no, it's not. It didn't. Mm. It didn't. It didn't make it. But, but I was trying to. How, what do you do with that? Yeah. You know what do you do with that? that? And so, I don't know how I got on that particular journey. I think you were talking about children of the day. Was I? And and so I was learning how. To uh, wanted to learn more about the things of God, and being called into ministry, and uh, and so I went through a whole journey of of that aspect of it, and I, I don't know, you know, how I got on that. I, I'm sorry, I can't can't continue that train of thought. But <laughs> come back. Uh, yeah, I don't even know where I am right now. <laughs> but the the uh, that was my journey. So when you're when God's calling you, understand He's calling you out of darkness into the light. And you need to immediately begin to learn the light. He says, those who follow my teachings are really my disciple. In other words, those who actually follow the light, learn the light and follow the light are truly children of the light. Mm -hmm. And if in fact that you are in the light and you can walk out of the light into darkness, which means, hey, once in the light, not always in the light, Mm. don't buy into that. Just buy into that. Somebody says, well, what's the ultimate answer? The ultimate answer is humility. Because pride is a, is a person that says, this is how it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But in a relationship, it's not like this. This is how it is in relationship. Humble yourself and be grateful that God's brought you into relationship with him. Amen. And don't sit here and put some uh, you know, blockades up for others and, and, and vice versa and for yourself and just realize 
that we are saved because of the grace and the mercies of God. And that it keeps you, if you can ever have a pet answer how things happen, you've already moved into pride. Yeah. The fact is, is that it just brings, everything brings you to a place of humility, which is total dependency on God and respect for other people. And so walking as children of the light. Um, man, I know it was really good what I was going to say, but it's gone. <laughs> you were talking about this, this little light of mine that's song. Oh, yeah, that was what it was. That's what it was. Uh, that's what it was. Wow. Thank you. He is a way. Thank you. Oh, good. my goodness. I appreciate that. Well, so I, go, so I got turned down by uh, the Bible College and the School of Ministry. And um, so then I go to the public university. Mm. And um, I am... I find out there's a, uh, a ministry on campus. I'm not going to say what it was, but it's a Christian ministry on campus. And I'm thinking, oh, this is great. Oh, this is just wonderful. Oh, this is just, I'm just pumped because like, hey, I want to find folks that follow Jesus too. Right. And I did. But I go in there and we sat in there and I'm going all the way from, you know, Marvin Gaye, Luther Vandross, um, you know, this um, genre genre of, 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 Music, Music, I guess. Yes. And and I get in there. <laughs> and, you know, we got about eight folks and they're sitting in chairs facing one direction with uh, somebody there. And they're just singing, this little light of mine, <laughs> I'm going to let it shine. <laughs> wow. This little light of mine. I'm like, paradigm shift. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Does Luther have a brother that got saved here somewhere where I can actually hear something? You know, it's like, and they're clapping. Ooh. They're clapping. They're like, and nobody looked like they had a light that was shining. And uh, they just looked kind of robotic. Yeah. And they knew the words to it. They probably sang it in nursery school or something. <laughs> and you now you're in college. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my goodness. You know, I just had this big, huge paradigm shift. I got turned down for going to Bible college. I walk up there and they're talking about this little light of mine. But then Jesus says that we're called to be the light of the world, not just let your little light shine. I don't know where that little light thing came from. More like this roaring inferno inside it's like, of me. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like um, I can't contain it anymore. Yeah. This roaring inferno. Yeah, this fire of me. in my bones. Shut yeah. up! That I, you know, it's this little light of mine. Come on. Yeah, like, I wonder who so, wrote that. Who well, you think that? about that a little light, a little, a little light. light. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you think about that the um, in regards to okay, a blanket of darkness covers the earth. Mm-hmm. Thick darkness covers the folks. Okay, then the light of God is within us, but the only way they can see light is if we let our light shine. Why would you want to be a little light? Mm. No, imagine if all of us begin to turn on our halogens in Jesus. You know what I'm talking about? Turn on our bright existence, the word, and not, oh, I, I forgot. Most, most people don't even, are in, mm. are in the light of God's word. They don't have anything to turn on. They turn on things like uh, there's other ways to God other than, than Jesus. And yeah, what did that well. come from? But the thing, if you get in the Word of God and begin to abide with God, and if you don't know how to abide with the light, go to iabide.org and begin to understand He wants it. What He didn't He didn't save you for a get out of hell free card. You were already bound there in the context of it when we were born into sin. We were born because of the fall of man. He saved you from it so that you can walk in relationship with Him, and so that you guys can abide. You and God can abide together, and He will empower you. To do things you thought never possible. Mm. So you both can enjoy, you and God can enjoy what He's doing in the earth as He's He's through you, loving God, loving others, and leading others to do the same. You know, it's, I mean, if you got any, I mean, a little flicker of a light, you know, I thank God for not even a smoldering wick, you know, is God going to, that Jesus put out. But in the context of it, crank it up a notch, you know what I'm saying? Fan into flame. Fan know? it into flames. Mm-hmm. Get, get, you know, God's got, what do you see over the hill? Do you see, darkness? Do you see terror? Do you see a vast army or do you see a heavenly host? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if All you see the heavenly... what you see. Yeah, it's in the he- it's in heavenly ho- a heavenly host when you talk about in the context of it, you know, that we got to begin to see what God says that's going on. And we see that with a light. And as a matter of fact, I don't know if we have uh, do we have the dream? We have Jonathan's dream and up and over here. But you got to hear this, you know, because we taught on uh, and teaching on as we speak and you're gonna be, it's going to be available to you soon at vinefellowshipnetwork.org, but in regards to, you know, rise, shine, and your light has come. Mm-hmm. And I'm teaching, well, I taught very specifically at that time about um, there's a vast army coming against Israel, what do you do? And, and now it's coming against the world, what do you do? Yeah. And we the valley of decision with Jehoshaphat and how to turn to God and how to realize if we'll just turn to God, listen to God, receive his battle plan in the context of that, what happens is 
that God defeats our enemy. He says the battle is not ours, but it's his. But understand, that doesn't happen unless he becomes our God. Mm. And anyway, so that was actually, um, that was uh, taught, you know, through the word of God, precept upon precept, about this vast army and facing facing impossible odds with God brings possible victories with men. And that's going to be made available to you soon. And But God confirmed it at the very end with an 11-year-old young man named Jonathan. And this is the light. This is who we're supposed to bring. Listen to this very short one-minute um, um, dream that J- Jonathan uh, is um, bringing up. Listen up. Well, um, last night when I was uh, sleeping, I dreamed that I was kind of like a... I was in the woods, but there's this big open space, like kind of like a battlefield. And there are these giants, this ar- big army of giants that came from one side. And then there were the um, these uh, other people that were human. I kind of, I just kind of knew that they were like Christians. And they were in armor and they had uh, swords and shields and so did the di- giants. And... Um, they came together and started fighting, and the giants uh, were winning, but there were only like a few uh, Christians left, and then angels started appearing out of nowhere with swords, uh, with fire coming from them, and they like destroyed the giants, and then I woke up. It's so important because there's a heavenly host. Their angels of God are waiting to fulfill the word of God, but we... If, if in fact we're not don't even know the word the light of God, if we're not even in the word of God, they're not going to fulfill our word. They're going to fulfill God's word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so if the enemy pulls out the word of God from your life and you buy into I can't abide with God and I don't have time to read the word and hide his word in my heart, mm-hmm. that, uh, that, that pulls the empowerment and the knowledge of what God's angels that are there to be able to, to move on God's behalf, on behalf of his folks and his people. And in the con- we need to realize that um, um, that there's a heavenly host. And when 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 I was teaching on this, what God revealed to me uh, about um, a vast army coming against Israel, God was allowing that. That we're talking about in the first hour, uh, being pressed between a rock and a hard place, and um, so that we would look to God. That's mm-hmm. the reason why he actually allowed that. And with that, that's where America is today. That's where the church is today. And But if, if we don't know about the Word of God, mm. if, then we're not going to speak the Word of God. We're not going to believe the Word of God. If you're not believing the Word of God, you're not confessing the Word of God. If you're not believing and confessing and faith the Word of God, the angels are just sitting kind of just waiting yeah. uh, for us to say, you know, whose report are you going to believe? Somebody says, I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. What, what's this report again? What's this report? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, they're waiting to be activated. They're waiting to be activated. They're not going to be activated when you don't send angels. And as a matter of fact, there was some stuff going on where people began to worship angels and, and they don't understand. No, they're God's, they're God's servants and they're servants of those who are the heir of salvation in regards to God's word. They fulfill God's word over us. And they protect that who is God, because obviously if we didn't have protection, that darkness could just come in and encroach us outside mm-hmm. of you know God protecting us. Which goes to show you that one angel is called goodness and one's called mercy, and it follows you all the days of your life. Don't ever put down goodness and mercy, right? But it, the, understand that they're waiting for us to grasp, grasp in the churches. We lost our perspective of of who God is and His strong right arm, and that one angel could take down thousands and thousands. You know, the, the, the angel um, Michael guarding um, Israel mm-hmm. and Gabriel. I mean, think about this. This is just amazing the things that could happen in the context of this. But we, we have to first turn our hearts to God, get his word back into our heart again and begin to go, oh, I see the heavenly host, God. Just yeah. like God was speaking through his word in Jehoshaphat, like he confirmed through um, through uh, Jonathan when he had that, p- that prophetic dream right there. And also like he spoke on September the 28th through uh, Brother John Kilpatrick out of uh, Church of His Presence, which you can go to johnkilpatrick.org and go to downloads and download that word, or you can go to the VFN Torch, go to vfntv.com and read the word as, as this is what God is saying. Listen, your help is in the heavens. Yeah. 
Your enemy is in the in this immediate third heaven, but God is above God, second heaven. God is your enemy's in the second heaven, which is around you, but your your God's in in the first heaven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's waiting for us to say, Go for it, God. We love you. I think no. about Elijah when when he was with the servant. Mm-hmm. He's coming against all these vast armies. Mm-hmm. And um he allows him to see in the spirit. It says, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. That's exactly the word that was on my heart oh, when wow. I'm saying that. Yeah. But what, did you, what do you see? What do you see? And if you don't have any light in your eyes, if you don't have any word in your eyes, you can't see that. Yeah. I can tell you that, but then you're actually having faith in what I'm telling you instead of what God has spoken into your heart. And it's what God has said to you that gives power. It's a revelation that God said to you. You can stand up boldly and proclaim, I see the heavenly host. Think about it then that God's word is a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. And we talked about that already, but understanding that's just so very, very important that you're just lost in darkness if you don't have the light. Yeah. And he says that you stumble around in many ways. And if you haven't yet gone to the VFN torch, I'm just going to just cover a couple of things real quick. Like, so you can know I'm at over 2000 plus, uh, sh- you know, beams of light that are there mm-hmm. waiting for you. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfnkb.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.